Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Rachel and I am knitting. Not right now, but most of the time. I am going to vlog today. I am new to vlogging, but I'm gonna try it out. Basically, long story short, I just finished my PhD program. I am done teaching for the semester and I have a little bit of time before I start my summer job and a little bit of time before graduation. So I've started this sock cranking service, um, which you can purchase on Etsy. And I have some orders to crank today. So I figured I'd take you along. Also, if you notice my glasses fogging up, it's not a moral failure. I just live in Louisiana and it's really hot. Okay, let's go. Let's just take a minute and appreciate my gardenia bush. It smells so good. Okay, guess what? The post office box, the P.O. box was empty. So that was um, a bust, but that's okay. I told myself initially I was going to check this P.O. box once a week, um, but this is now the second day in a row I've checked it. So apparently um, I just don't have realistic expectations about anything ever. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna head back to the house. I have two people's uh, yarn for two different orders um, waiting for me. So it will still be a productive day. And this was basically like a field trip out of the house for enrichment. And I guess that's good for me. So let's head back to the house and get to cranking. Here's a clip of me at the post office. So you know I actually went there and you don't think I'm a fraud. Okay, I'm back home and actually the first thing I have to do before I crank is eat something. I got my machine almost a year ago, I think in June or July of 2022. And I got a ton of Instagram messages at the time giving me advice. One of them, if it was you, thank you so much. I don't know, I don't remember who it was, but they said the best piece of advice for using a circular sock machine is never crank hungry. And I'm hungry, so I'm gonna make some oatmeal. I know this isn't really knitting related, but here I am making oatmeal. This is just a great way to start my day. I like this Better Oat Steel Cut, not sponsored, because who has an oatmeal sponsorship? Not me. Next up, we must have coffee. Use this mug today. I made this with molasses and white sugar. Becky of Acre Homestead taught me. Super easy. If this grosses you out and it's not how you eat your oatmeal, um, sorry. It's how I eat mine, so... That's the way it is. Okay, I like my oatmeal and coffee to cool down a little bit before I have them. So while they're cooling down, I'll show you the yarn for our first order. Okay, so here are two skeins. They're for my first order and they are for Kathleen from LaRue Cotton. She hand dyes her yarn in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And let me tell you, I'm really excited to work with these yarns um, for a few reasons. The first is kind of selfish. And that is because I'm going to get to meet Kathleen and hang out with her on um, a knitting tour trip to Ireland in October. Super excited about that. But also, not so selfishly, I'm really excited to work with this yarn because I do not have a lot of experience working with um, natural plant fibers. And that is Kathleen's specialty. So a lot of indie dyers um, that I know of and that I've worked with before, they specialize in merino wool which is amazing. Obviously, I love merino wool, but I really want to branch out into natural plant fibers and Kathleen um, is the perfect way to do that. So these two skeins are totally vegan yarn. They are made up of 40% tensile, 40% organic cotton, and 20% 20 elastic. I don't know where that seven came from. Woo! So, okay. So very excellent blend, excited to work with this. And the colors are absolutely gorgeous. I'll show you close-ups in a second. This one is called Garden Party. And honestly, this is the type of colorway that I would buy a sweater quantity of. It is totally my vibe. I love the greens, there's blues, there's purples. It looks kind of like a watercolor painting to me, like maybe a Monet painting. Um, I'm not like an art 
critic or whatever. Um, but in my mind, that makes sense. And I love this colorway. This colorway is called Beach Day and it's really beautiful with these creams and pinks. There's even a little bit of blues and um, kind of green spots. So really gorgeous. Really excited to see how this cranks up. And um, let me show you a close up of the twist on this yarn and how the colors are blending together. So as you may be able to see, the twist is different than we might be used to, and that's because those different fibers are wrapping around each other, and it makes a really interesting and cool final product. Okay, now that you've seen close-ups of these skeins, you will surely believe me that they are gorgeous. The twist is really interesting. So let's wind these into cones and get cranking. So to wind a cone, you're going to unravel your hank and put it on your yarn swift just as you would as if you were winding into a cake. I have a drill attachment that was provided with my machine from Dean and Bean Sock Machines. And so I just put the cone onto the drill attachment and I use that to quickly and effectively, unless I do something wrong, quickly and effectively, most of the time, um, wind these into cones. So you start from the base of the cone and you gradually work your way up. So you kind of make a funnel shape and mimic the natural shape of the cone. This helps with the cranking so the yarn doesn't get tangled. So now I have two cones and the next step is to get gauge. Okay, so I am now sitting in my little cranking corner of our living room where my sock machine lives. And what I need to do now that I have wound the hanks into cones is I need to determine Kathleen's foot measurement. And she's provided me a tracing of her foot. I'm not gonna show you cause it's none of your business. This is trusted information. Um, not that anyone should be ashamed of their feet or anything. I'm sure you have lovely feet, Kathleen. It's just like, I don't know, I wouldn't want someone to show other people a tracing of my foot if I sent it to them. Anyway, okay, so I'm going to measure the width of the foot and the length of the foot so I can determine um, what size cylinder to use when I'm cranking Kathleen's socks. The next step is I'm going to crank about 100 rows with um, the yarn and then I will measure that portion that I crank to determine how wide the tube is and how many rows per inch the tube has. And then I can adjust accordingly to make sure I have the width I want and I know what the length will be with some basic math. All right, now we are ready to get our gauge determined. So we're gonna start by hanging the setup on it on our machine and adding the yarn. Normally when you're making socks, you're gonna start with waist yarn and ravel cord, but since we're doing gauge right now, we can just start immediately with the yarn that's being used. So once the um, stitches are all set up, I am free to crank. I'm gonna go about 75 to 100 rows just so I get a really um, indicative and accurate measurement of how the socks will crank up when I'm actually making socks as opposed to a gauge tube. And I will say that I really don't enjoy checking gauge. This process is kind of tedious, especially if I don't get it on the first or second try and it's pretty time consuming. Okay, so now I have um, a bit of a tube. It's my suspicion that this is too wide, so I'm probably gonna have to change to a smaller cylinder. See, what did I tell you? That is super annoying, but I will say it is not as bad as if I were hand knitting and I made a whole swatch over the course of an hour or two and then realized that the gauge didn't work and I had to redo the whole thing. So it really is a fraction of the time compared to hand knitting, that is true. Um, but I don't know, maybe I just get easily frustrated and I really hate checking gauge even when it is on a circular sock machine. So this was a 64 cylinder, so I'm gonna go down, I think to a 54 and try that. Okay, I have put that swatch back on the cone super fast with the power drill attachment. And now I'm going to crank a swatch on the 54 cylinder needle and see where we get. Here's my 54 cylinder and what that means is there's 54 um, latch hook needles to make 54 stitches per tube. So I'm gonna put this cylinder in the machine and fill it with needles. 
I'm definitely looking forward to the day when I have enough needles to fully outfit every single one of my cylinders. Right now I don't have that luxury so often if I am changing cylinders I need to take needles from another one and transfer them to the one I'm using at the time um, which adds to the time it takes to check gauge which adds to my frustration so definitely looking forward to the day when I have enough latch hooks to be in every slot of every cylinder and I don't have to worry about transfers. Okay, so I'm adding this voiceover like almost a month after I filmed this content. And so it looks like what's happening is even with the 54 cylinder, I didn't get gauged. So now I'm going down another cylinder size. This is the 48 cylinder, which is the smallest cylinder I have. And so I must be really frustrated. Past me must be like her butt's on fire with frustration because this is now the third cylinder I've had to try winding the yarn back onto the cone so now I can check gauge for the third time. So really, in summary, I hate checking gauge. It's just part of the process, so definitely I need to get over it, but um, we can all take a minute and maybe uh, don't feel sorry for me, but pretend that uh, it's pitiful. Okay, thanks. Okay, I just measured and I finally have the width I want, so now I'm going to count how many rows per inch I have and then calculate the number of rows to crank for this pair of sample socks. So once you know your gauge after all that, you still have to wind it back on the cone and you have to reset your machine. So now I'm putting the setup on it back on my cylinder and now I'm using waste yarn. This is going to separate this sock from my setup on it so I can easily remove it when it's a finished product. Now I am finally on my way and I'm actually cranking a sock as um, we get to this part. At this part, I am hanging the cuff. There is a double cuff on the style of socks that I make, and that requires each and every stitch to be double knit after your uh, predetermined amount of rows. I knit 30 rows and then I hang the cuff. Now the cuff is hung, I put the weights back in, and I'm cranking the leg portion of the sock. After you crank the leg portion, you've got to make the heel. So that's what's going on here. The heel and the toe are probably the most intensive part of cranking socks. It is very um, meticulous and you have to pay attention to a lot of different factors that are going into your cranking. This is the area that, at least for me, is easiest to mess up and lose your whole sock progress. So it's really important that you're paying special attention when you are on the heel and toe portion. Once you finish your first sock, you can add waste yarn and you'll be ready to knit your second sock without having to remove what's currently on the machine and without having to rehang your setup bonnet. I didn't realize this until I saw someone else doing it and it was a game changer. So definitely don't remove what's on your machine just to hang the same setup on it. You can keep going um, with sock after sock after sock. Just make sure that you're being careful and mindful when you're doing this. So now I'm hanging the cuff of my second sock and onto the leg portion of the second sock and we'll fast forward to some heartbreak. So get ready. Okay, so remember I said you need to be paying attention to a lot of moving pieces when you're doing the sock um, toe and sock heel. And I messed up at this part. I dropped a stitch and it seems counterintuitive, but um, really I should have just taken it off the machine and started over. I think I might even tell you that in a minute, um, but I'll tell you twice because it's really important to know. Don't try and be a hero. It's really frustrating and defeating, but sometimes it's just what has to happen. So if you couldn't tell what just happened there, I had cranked one sock and I was cranking the second sock when I got to the toe and I messed up. I made a mistake I should have known better um, than to make and it caused me to drop a bunch of stitches. And at that point, it seems counterintuitive, but it's faster to just take it off the machine and start that sock completely over. So frustrated with myself when that happens when I'm on the toe because that's literally the last part 
of the sock. I'm so close to being done and I messed it up. So I do have one sock that I cranked and I'm gonna go ahead and take it off this waste yarn and then Kitchener stitch the toe closed and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So at least we have one sock and we'll do the rest after I complete the Kitchener stitch on this. Guess what? I did the Kitchener stitch on that toe and I messed that up too. And the whole toe, the whole sock was a total loss. And I texted DJ and I was like, everything's going wrong. I'm so frustrated. I don't know what to do. And he said, um, take a break and eat lunch. And I was like, he's so smart. I was cranking hungry and that is the first rule of cranking. Do not crank hungry. So I ate some food and I went back at it to try and see if I could actually complete a sock successfully. Let's go. Okay, finally, several hours later, because I kept making stupid mistakes and I cranked hungry, I had a late lunch. DJ had to remind me like, hey, maybe you're getting frustrated because you need to eat. And I was like, wow, you're so smart. Okay, so anyway, several hours later, I have four socks. And now what I'm going to do is Kitchener stitch um, the toes so they are closed and complete socks. So I'll um, do that on camera for you. I'm not going to explain how to do it in this video because like so many things have gone wrong today and I'm just pooped. So that will be another video another time. Um, but for now, enjoy this uh, shot of me Kitchener stitching the toes closed. So this is um, a very meditative part of making socks. It is the part that you do by hand and this is where it's really important to have your waist yarn. It's where the waist yarn really comes in handy and it's important that you pick a waist yarn that is high contrast to the color of the socks you have cranked. You're going to go through and Kitchener that seam closed. The seam sits on the top of your foot um, between the top of your feet and where the toe portion begins so you don't have to worry about standing on the seam or feeling that on the bottom side of your foot uh, which is very nice I think but yeah I didn't really conceptualize Kitchener stitch in this way until I machine knit so it's kind of cool to see the different ways that we can use techniques that at least for me I often use in hand knitting and I still need to use it even when I am working on a machine knit product. Okay, we have the first pair done. The toes are sewn together. Now let's do the second pair. I figured I would record this point of view while I was Kitchener stitching. I look so mad. It's so funny to me. Um, also, while I was filming this at certain points, uh, Kitchener stitching garden party up, I was telling a story about... Um, my 18 year old self and how much I love the Jonas Brothers and how that translated to my first foray into making YouTube videos. So if you ever wanna hear that story, just let me know. If you think this time lapse is boring, you should try doing it in real time yourself because it's more boring. Okay, at this point, I just have to tell you, it, I enjoy cranking socks, don't get it twisted. I just felt awkward on this day filming myself and narrating. The socks are done. I'm gonna put them on sock blockers so you can see the true shape and cuteness of them. I'm so happy and impressed with how this base knit up. I want to get some for myself. These I'm sending back to Kathleen. Um, but I was really impressed with the twist of this yarn and how the color blends together. I think they're really, really pretty. I would definitely, um, enjoy these i would love to have like a cozy comfy cardigan out of this colorway it's so beautiful um yeah they they're done two pairs of socks in one day who knew i'll tell you who knew i knew i can make four pairs of socks in a day if nothing goes wrong but so many things went wrong because i again broke that rule i cranked hungry and i was cranky so don't be cranky when you crank learn from my mistakes but still, we got gorgeous socks. Here's beach day and garden party. I mean, just look at this. Look at this. Okay, I think I'm going to probably leave it here for today. I had hoped to crank a few more pairs of socks, um, but I am going to know my limits for today. And 
hit the machine again on Wednesday. So thanks so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing a little bit of the process that is required to crank socks on a circular sock machine. I definitely hope to share more videos with you in the future. If there's something in particular you'd like to see, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you wanna see my future content. Okay, YouTube is scary and stressful. I'm gonna go back to Instagram where I am safe and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching, bye. Okay, a few things I forgot to tell you. Again, this is LaRue Cotton, hand dyed in Michigan by Kathleen, super beautiful colorways. If you need plant-based fibers, this is the place to go. Check her out and tell her I sent you. Nothing's gonna happen, but I feel cool telling people to tell other people that. Okay, bye.